you're you're in the USA right now. What what are you doing exactly? Uh, I live in America now. Oh, I didn't realize that. Well, yeah, I um, me in America is like a one night stand that ended up as a relationship. <laughs> like it just it gradually like oh, I guess. Well, my toothbrush is here now, so I guess we're a thing. So, are you in the sort of strange position where you're you're publicly known in the states, but no one notices you when you come to Britain? I wouldn't say publicly known. Like I, I got people who come to see me when I tour, but it's not like I walk down the streets and get harassed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm far from that stage. I've got a certain number of people who know who I am in America. I got, a, I've got a few people who recognise me in the UK just because I did a TV show a few years ago that keeps getting repeated. Yeah, I remember that. It's one of those sort of greatest hits YouTube kind of shows, wasn't it? What was that? Yeah, it's it's kind of annoying because <laughs> it's like I did six episodes four years ago and they still show them on a loop. And also now, here's what happens. Because Alex Zane took over the series and he's now done five or six series since, but my episodes still come around in the rotation every so often. But people forget that I hosted it originally. So what happens is when my episodes come back around... I only know about it because I get Twitter messages from people slagging me off, going like, "Who's this guy who's taken over the show?" Like, no, I, that was this was two thousand and eight. I did it. I did it six years ago, and now I can't stop them from re-showing them. I hope you get a royalty every time. You get repeat fees. I absolutely do not. So it's, it's doubly annoying. No check lands on the doormat. The only way the only way I know I'm getting repeated is from fourteen-year-old boys being angry at me on the internet. Okay, so let's talk about Glastonbury then. So you'll be uh, you'll be doing a show at Glastonbury again. I take it that is just your your basic stand up. Yeah, that's a, uh, I think two thirty five. I, I believe in the cabaret tent on Saturday afternoon. Oh. I'm doing a half hour slot. Okay, and um, new new material. Yeah, I what well, I tried to do different stuff to what I did last year. I can't I can't remember exactly what I was talking about last year. I get bored if I do the same material again, and I know if people see me more than once, they want to see new stuff. So I. I like to keep them mixed up. I remember um, my friend Brendan Burns telling me a while ago that when I, the first festival I did, which was a much smaller one, I did with him. And he was like, listen, the thing about a festival is you just got to go with the flow. You got to go with whatever happens. And he's absolutely right. Like it's, you have less control over what's going on than a regular gig because people are wandering in and out of the tent and no one's, some people might come to see you specifically, but a lot of the time people are like, oh, what's this? Which is great. I mean, I've had some amazing times at festivals just wandering into a tent or wandering across a stage and going, oh, I wonder what this band is or what this this person's doing, and it's been really fun. But the flip side is people don't know what you are and don't know what to expect, and you can, you can get anything. You know, you could get a group of people who are really into the show. You could get a 10-year-old kid who suddenly decides they want to be part of the show. So you, you really don't know how, what's going to happen. So I can't tell you exactly what material I'm going to be doing because I haven't got the faintest idea yet. Given that you spend a lot of time in the States, this must be like a bit of a reunion for you. You're going to meet, I mean, there's an impressive lineup here. I love the festival. I love the, the atmosphere. I love just wandering around, both the, like the main bands, but then once everything's finished, wandering off into the green fields or into the crazy circus areas and that kind of thing. But uh, the main reason I'm doing it is, and I'm, I'm taking a loss on the gig because there's no way, even with some other gigs that I've booked around the festival in the UK, there's no way it's going to cover my airfare and all that kind of thing. But the, it's a chance for me to catch up with my friends. It's a chance for me to spend five days in various fields with people that I really love, wandering around, seeing nonsense. 